Hey everyone, it's Nikki. And Kate. And we are here at CES. It's your first year. It is. So welcome to Las Vegas. It's a wonderful city. I think you are going to be absolutely exhausted by the end of the day. I hey, what time is it now? It is, mm, it's one o'clock. We've just arrived. Our first thing is at three. Uh, we've got the Byton. This is our schedule. We've got the Byton. Um, Byton Reveal. Byton Reveal. And there really isn't much we know about Byton, other than the fact that it is a car company. And it is a connected vehicle, connected to the internet. We've in seen some, some teasers on YouTube. Yeah. Um, then we're off to, um, there's a Q&A, which yeah. we're going to go to for, for Byton. So hopefully we'll find out some more information about that. And then after that, we're going to NVIDIA. Why are we going to a graphics chip manufacturer when we cover cars and clean vehicle tech. Well, that seems like a really odd thing to do. Why don't you explain? So, uh, NVIDIA obviously makes graphics chips, which are great also. The same type of processing, parallel processing units are very good as well for autonomous vehicles. And in, NVIDIA's been in the autonomous vehicle market for some time now, not as, as somebody who provides um, technology to the end user, but what we call a tier one part supplier. We'll be back later on with a bit of a roundup as to what we've got done and what yeah. we've seen and uh, stay right there. So Kate, Byton, to Byton. Byton. To Byton? To go for a Byton? Is it a noun, a verb, an adjective, or all of the above? I think it is all three. <laughs> it's also part of your house and where you live. Yes, and, and that's the whole idea about Byton. It's, it's, uh, uh, it wasn't really referred to much as a car, more as an appliance, a smart home, an extension. I mean, the whole thing, they started off with this. We are going to extend your home. They played this yeah. infographic saying, you, you waste 2.8 billion hours in a year yeah, in, 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 a car. in a car. Not you personally, but us collectively as a society. Yeah, I mean, one individual is not wasting 2.8 billion no, hours. No, that's the thing. Uh, very light on specs, uh, massive touchscreen, centre, yeah, steering dash. wheel. Steering wheel, touchscreen in the middle of the steering wheel, which seems a little bit... I'm intrigued as to how that works when you're steering. Or whether the it airbag. Just I mean, the airbag through the touch screen. I mean, that could be expensive and or painful, but okay. This is a car company that seriously wants us to take it seriously. And a lot of reassurance about all their business partners, everyone they're all working with. All the things with they've done in the past, which I think is just a way of, of Byton doing some due diligence to make sure that we don't perceive it as the next Faraday future. Yeah. Talking about production, there is already a factory in China being built right now for this vehicle, which will go into production in 2019. Yeah. Byton was very keen to talk about this being a concept car, and I've got to hand it to them. This is a much smoother, more refined, more polished presentation than I think we saw with Faraday Future last year, which was frankly... A shambles? A shambles. shambles. I thought you were going to use another word beginning with S and then another S word after it. It's, an, it's actually a nicely designed car. You said, you whispered to me during that it looks a bit like a bigger BMW i3. Yeah. A little bit of Faraday future in there. But loads of tech, uh, you know, LiDAR, um, radar, sensors, sensors all everywhere. of that. that. And we didn't go into the full technicalities of it, though. It was just alluded to, right? And there's a lot of discussion with them about being able to upgrade the sensors later. Which I which thought was, was the most important, exciting thing about this whole vehicle. Yeah. Not that there were all these other things that Byton wants to do in the future, but that this is a car that Byton says it will be able to to upgrade for you. Yeah. I, mean, I think that you'll it, be it able to short of saying up. that. Yeah. But it sort of implied that everything in the car can be removed and upgraded modular style, which is very German. It is it's actually. It's very it German, very, very and, and you know, there's some emphasis on open source, open platform, uh, the operating system, Bite and Life, yeah. which is like a lifestyle web portal for you to be able to follow your car. Um, Amazon Alexa is going to be very, very heavily integrated into this a car. A lot of Amazon Alexa. We're looking at next generation CCS, I think I'm going to call that, and say it's CCS 350 kilowatts. Um, Fair. 
No mention of a, of a Tesla-like supercharger network? No. But the final thing, $45,000 starting price. Biden calls this affordable. That is not an affordable vehicle. I mean, that is not. Am, am, I, am, I, am I wrong here? It's not and affordable, is it? No, no. I mean, I'm interested to see what they do with the platform, though. Yes, it's, it's going to be a modular car. There's going to be other platforms that go with it. But $45,000 is not. It's just not. Full stop. No. It's not. So uh, where are we off to next? We're going to uh, go and Q and A, uh, and then Q and A, and then we're off to tech trends and a couple of other things. Yep. So, over to us in the future. So rather than going to see us unveiled, we skipped that. We skipped that, and we went to the Byton Q and A. Yeah. What did we learn from the Byton Q and A that we didn't already know? So there's some interesting stuff about the way the software is going to work in the vehicle mm -hmm. and whether they're going to be doing open source or some kind of semi-open kind of walled garden for apps. So, you know, off the basis of that, what I got from the founders is that they're, they're, they're kind of, they've got this very principled, noble idea of what a car should be and a very principled, noble idea of what a electric car should be. I don't know if they're going to follow through with that, but they do want open source, but they're going to block off part of the car, which makes sense. Block off the systems that could damage the car or yeah. cause the car to crash. So that's a good thing. And there was a lot of hedging around. We want this to be a vehicle that everyone can access, that can be really open. And then also that kind of discussion about, well, Yes, we have looked at that a bit in terms of we can make money long term yeah. of selling apps and access. And how does that fit together? It's right, because really I mean, you, you asked the question, you know, at $45,000, how are you going to make money from this car? Because Byton is like, hey, we want to make this car upgradable. Yeah. We want to sell you this car. And um, then in three years' time, when we come up with new fancy features like, uh, level, level five four or level four autonomy. Yeah. Um, you can buy an upgrade package and we'll take the car in and we'll upgrade just the sensors, which is very different to what Tesla's done. Because Tesla's like, you have the, 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 the autopilot sensors that the car shipped with. Yeah. If your you car want doesn't a new one, have them, buy a then new car. You don't have, well, if you don't have the sensors, you can't have them. If you want a newer system, buy a new car. Yeah. And that's how Tesla is making money. Tesla is making a lot of money from, from upselling existing customers yeah. to the next model. Which is a really traditional model. Which is a automotive. traditional automotive model. Oh. But you asked them how they were going to make their money and they were a bit fuzzy on that, right? Yeah, I mean, they basically said that their traditional automotive model would carry them to break-even point. Which, if you're oh. selling this complex a vehicle at $45,000 a pop, I want to know I'm where the money's really from. Like, the, I mean, the technology in it is pretty... If it works, it's pretty impressive and going to be expensive. Let's talk the factory in China. Yeah. It's already being constructed. It is. Biden says it needs one billion, one billion, one billion dollars to, to get that all set up and, and running. So far, 310 million, which isn't a lot. No, no. It and they've, is they've very... just, they've closed their A round. They are working on their B round of funding. Yeah really small staff right now, right? Yeah. Can you remember the number? I think he said under a thousand. Under a thousand people working at the company. It has come out of stealth. And I asked the kind of the, the million dollar question, which is, how do you make sure that you're not another Faraday future? I didn't say Faraday future because I'm too good. I, I think Byton is a very earnest company. Yes. In a way that Faraday future was not. Faraday future was like, hey, look at our car. It's great. Look at all the things it can do. It's brilliant. I don't get that from, no. from Byton. It's much more, maybe it's because we're European and a lot of the people on the team are German and we're kind of like a yeah. like very stoic, stayed, very measured. like, this is what we intend to do. Cheers. Cheers. This is the end of CES day one. Yes. Not you survived. The end of CES. Mm. And we are currently at the MGM. Um, we have yeah. just sat through what I think is probably <laughs> the second longest 
press event that I've ever... I've done a, a two and a half before, but this was nearly two hours from NVIDIA. Yeah. Now, I think it's fair to say that you and I are both, both nerds. I think that might be something you could say. And NVIDIA announced a whole slew of cool things, gaming and machine learning, and then cumulated with what turned out to be nearly an hour on autonomous vehicles. Yes, it was quite impressive. So let's actually. just give you some stats. 320 partners now working with NVIDIA on autonomous vehicles. Um, more than 320. More than 320. That includes car makers, universities, software companies, etc., etc. And not just cars, also trucks. Trucks. Or lorries, um, depending the, the on where you are. The transportation world is the biggest industry in the world, according to NVIDIA. Basically, they want in on it. They, NVIDIA yeah. wants in on it. They basically, they are diversifying in a fairly spectacular way, but not diversifying what they do, just the applications of what so, they do. Yeah, they're basically using, NVIDIA is pushing, I mean, this is not necessarily a secret, but what is incredible is a brand new chipset yeah. from NVIDIA specifically for automotive vehicles. It is incredible. The, yes. um, the Drive Xavier, yeah, and that's which it. I think is an amazing name. Yes. Um, it is the, the largest uh, SOC ever made. Now, for yeah. those who don't know what SOC is, System on a chip. System on a chip, and um, it is the largest system on a chip ever made. I mean, when you start to look at how rapidly this has scaled in terms of just sheer power, it is frankly astonishing. 8,000 years worth of development. And Mainly achieved through deep learning. Through, so, right, so we're at a point now where the computer technology has got so good Artificial intelligence is designing artificial intelligence. Yeah. We're done. Yeah, okay, it's time for us to leave now. We because are. Because we are cooked. We are cooked. But safety systems, um, incredible, incredible augmented reality systems. Incredible vision analysis. So vision, vision analysis, Vision yeah. systems with binocular vision and being able to manage that this NVIDIA Z Drive Xavier yeah. is going to be used in level three and level four cars. Yes. So level three is uh, what we're currently seeing like with Tesla, that's level three. Level four is drives on its own most of the time. Yeah. And then for level five, we have, robo taxis. We have NVIDIA Drive Pegasus. That's two Xaviers. Yeah. And that's full level five autonomy. It is, and they're already partnering pe with people and to do this that. This is the crazy thing. 400 watts. Yeah. Pegasus yeah. uses 400 watts. I, I know. It's just freaky small. I like, I, my, just. That's two electric bicycles worth of power. Yes. Not even. Not even. 400 watts is That's less like than your four PC old uses. light bulbs. My, my media server is 500 watts. Yes. And, 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 and the power consumption for the, the server that we're using to store all this data on from today is 750 watts. Yeah. So it uses more energy for me to keep the video files from this very day <laughs> on my server than it does than for it their would be for system. The car to drive itself. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, quite a substantial leap in technology. Yeah, it is. It and, is. And, and, we're talking billions of transistors. Nine billion. Nine billion transistors on Xavier. On Xavier. So that's, so 18, that's 18 billion transistors. And, and the augmented reality, the, the, the AR, the training of the AR is incredible. And well, it's, a, it's a whole, it's a really integrated package. It's very clever what they've done because they've pulled all the threads back in from Yes, you need to do this stuff to be able to drive the car. You have to be able to examine what's going on in the road around you and you need context. And then you say, well, but then the passengers in your autonomously driven vehicle, they want to know what's going on so that they're comfortable there. So we can show it to them by generating a virtual reality. Using like, the dashboard. Using the dashboard. It's... Uh, so the dashboard then projects what it sees in the world around it and the hazards and things like that. Um, and to demonstrate that, they did the most incredible thing. So in the real world, 
because NVIDIA has been testing autonomous vehicles in the world. And we should also mention that eight mile Oh, no yes. contact test drive. I mean, there yeah. really was so much. Eight miles with 23, uh, Stop, 23 uh, junctions. Junctions and so many stops. Yeah. And this this vehicle, um, or now NVIDIA is testing its autonomous vehicles in the virtual reality. Yeah. But at, still at a point where it was collecting visual data from real world autonomous driving cars. Yeah. Okay. So data from all those cameras. What it did was it took that information, fed it into a simulator inside, what did it call the holodeck? Yes. That was quite Which a nice a little... Which is a nice touch. Do you think perhaps somebody at, at, at um, NVIDIA is a fan of Sir Patrick? It is a possibility. Because we have the holodeck and we have Xavier. Yes. That is true. That is a good point. I am a fan of Sir Patrick, so I really Everyone don't... Everyone is. I, I, yes. <laughs> Although I don't think he would drink this. It would be tea, tea Earl Great Hot. Anyway, yes. we're going off on a... It's <laughs> late at night. Tangent. It's nearly 11 o'clock at night. We've been awake way too long. Yes. Um, the NVIDIA um, setup yeah. had a virtual holodeck playing real recording, real recorded footage from a real car. Yeah. And then inside that, they had a virtual uh, Xavier system. Yes. Which projecting was then projecting a virtual representation of an augmented reality dash onto the virtually simulated yeah. display of a Ferrari. It, it kind of got a bit like I am not it sure how many layers of this onion well, you know I'm Elon, watching. You know, Elon so. Musk said that we are, we could, it's likely that we are living in a simulation. Oh, has he? So okay. it's very likely that what we just saw was a simulation of a simulation inside of a simulation in which we are both simulations. Are we simulations? The, the thing that's not a simulation is our paychecks. Oh, good. Okay. But there we go. Anyway, that is it for today for CES. We've got another five days? Four. Four and five, a half. Four and a half days. And I promise that we will get some sleep. We will get some one. sleep. Um, I'm going to get uh, Brandon to come over and get his heads, get his, get his, get his headphones off and come round because he's part of the team as well. Come on, Brandon, come round. Take come your headphones off. They don't, they don't go that far. Hello. This is Brandon. This is the guy behind the camera. He's feeling better now. He was very white earlier on. <laughs> But he's that, a that, little too excited. That, that a little too excited. So thank you, Brandon, for your sterling work. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We will be back tomorrow. Bye. Bye.